diamonds in the rough. NFL Draft Diamonds. Time to shine. Hi, my name is Jimmy Williams with NFL Draft Diamonds, and today I have with me uh, Samari Torre. Uh, he's a wide receiver out of Nebraska, formerly out of Montana. So uh, nice to have you on, buddy. Appreciate it. Thanks for having me. So yeah, I mean, you uh, you started your uh, collegiate uh, career at Montana, eventually transferred uh, to Nebraska. Uh, why don't you go ahead and just kind of walk us through that journey a little bit? Tell me where you're from and, and how you ultimately got to uh, you know where you played your last season. Yep. So um, I'm from Portland, Oregon. I went to Westview High School. Um, kind of was a late bloomer, I guess you could say. You know, was on the freshman team as a freshman, sophomore team uh, on the JV as a sophomore. And then junior year, you know, got some opportunities that opened up uh, at the starting receiver position. And, you know, I didn't look back. You know, I started to work on my craft and had a pretty good junior year uh, and, and a really good senior year, you know, but I was still under recruited coming out of high school. My only full offer was Air Force. Uh, but, you know, Montana came in, you know, towards close to signing day because my offensive coordinator uh, knew Coach Bob Sid at the time. Uh, so they I ended up going on a visit out there right before signing day. Uh, they ended up offering me a half scholarship, you know, and I just took that. So, you know, once I got there, kind of like a fresh start for me, you know, an under-recruited guy like me, you know, they weren't, you know, expecting a lot. So came in there, redshirted as a freshman. Uh, my redshirt freshman year, they had me in the slot, you know, had it, had it, it didn't start, but I had a pretty successful year, around 30 catches, 500 yards, five touchdowns. And then our whole coaching staff got fired after that that first year. So then coach uh, Bobby Houck and his staff came in, they moved me to outside receiver. So that was kind of a struggle for me, you know, my sophomore year, um, learning how to play outside position at the college level. So kind of struggled a little bit, um, but then going into my junior year, really worked on uh, my technique, you know, and try to get better at, you know, just being an outside receiver, you know, I ended up having a pretty successful uh, junior year. You know, and uh, following that, I felt like uh, it was kind of, you know, with the pandemic and everything, it was perfect timing to, you know, make that transition to the FBS level because I knew I could could perform. And I knew, you know, that's that's what uh, I felt like that's what the NFL wanted to see. You know, they wanted to see me against the best of the best. And they wanted me to, well, I wanted to kind of prepare myself better for that next level. So I ended up making that decision and ended up in Nebraska. Yeah, I mean, like you said, I mean, uh, 2019 was just phenomenal for you. I mean, um, uh, the stat line on that was almost 1,500 yards, which is just sick as a wide receiver. So, you know, uh, a great year, year, year there, uh, All-American. Um, I know at one point or another I had you as my top-rated, you know, small school, you know, player, or at least in the mix there until you decided to throw your hat in the ring for the transfer portal. So, um, so you, 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 you hit the transfer portal and ended up going with, uh, Nebraska. Uh, why mm -hmm. Nebraska? Um, it, it just felt like a good fit for me, you know, both coach Frost and the offensive coordinator at the time, coach Lubick were both, uh, Oregon guys, you know, they coached at the university of Oregon, you know, me being from Oregon, you know, I knew that they had one of the most explosive offenses in the country, you know, when they were there. So I knew they had. Uh, we had some offensive minds over there. And also, you know, they just, you know, were on the same level as me as much as far as, you know, we need a, we need a number one receiver. We need a guy who can come in and kind of perform for us right away uh, with Juan Dale leaving and everything. So, and that was exactly what I was looking for when I went into the portal, somewhere where, you know, I can make it, I only have a year, so I have no choice but to come in and make an impact right away. And, you know, they thought the same thing. So it just felt like a good fit. Yeah, and, you know, uh, oftentimes, I guess, you know, when guys do make that jump from, you know, the small school level up to uh, Division One FBS uh, in the Power Five, nonetheless, um, sometimes that just uh, doesn't always pan out. But, you know, in your case, um, really stepped in, did a, did a great job there at, at Nebraska, and uh, just, you know, 
didn't miss a beat, really. So, I mean, if you watch, if you watch a guy like you play, you know, you were out there, um, you know, getting targets, you know, in the short game and the long game and all over the place. So, uh, let's just kind of talk about you as a prospect. Uh, what do you feel is the best thing you have going for you as a prospect? Uh, like maybe, uh, I don't know, what do you feel separates you, uh, in, you know, going into the draft? Um, I would probably just say my versatility. Uh, I like to look at myself as a pretty versatile receiver, you know, as far as uh, I feel like I run pretty good intermediate routes, you know, and, you know, I only really on film, I only kind of got to show, you know, explosive plays or like deep plays down the field. But, you know, I, I can I can run a lot of different routes. And also, you know, I just feel like I have natural hands, you know, kind of just a natural feel, you know, how to get open and, you know, where, to, where, where the ball is going to be and when it's going to be there. So I feel like, and also I can play in the slot and outside, you know, which a lot of receivers got to do at this point uh, in the NFL. So I just feel like my versatility is kind of something that sets me apart. So um, obviously we get a guy who could play both slot and, and out wide. Um, you know, when you maybe look at people at the next level, like is there somebody that you try to – compare yourself to emulate or even study or maybe somebody you're a fan of at the next level. So um, who, who's that one guy that, uh, you know, we could say this, this Torre guy is, is similar to. Um, it, it's really hard to pinpoint just one guy, you know, cause I like to take bits and pieces from a lot of different receivers, but I would say my favorite receivers to watch, you know, both as a football player and a fan, you just gotta be all, all the top guys out there like Stephon Diggs, you know, Devonte Adams, Keenan Allen, uh, Justin Jefferson, you know, just all those guys who are kind of pure route runners and can create separation. Um, just a lot of a lot of versatile guys, you know, like you said. So I like to take bits and pieces of, of all their game. So um, obviously, a guy who who's uh, lines up everywhere and you know uh, tries his best to be a versatile route runner. What would you say is your favorite route? Is is there something that like you're always like, you know, man, they called this one play and you're just kind of itching to, to to get that one play. So uh, favorite yeah. route? Yeah, I mean, well, it, as far as that, like, you know, of the routes I want to run in game or routes like when I heard I knew it was going to be a touchdown, we're, we're all of our deep routes, you know, this year, both this year and at Montana. You know, at Montana, we had a post and uh, at Nebraska, we had a little switch post and you know, I knew when those plays plays were called that it was it was most likely going to be a big play if we got the right look. But other than that, you know, I like I like any double moves as well. I like slant goes and uh, out nubs, all that. Nice. Um, and uh, again, had yourself a really good career. Uh, ended up getting an invite out to the East West Shrine Bowl, so uh, that was definitely interesting. So uh, chat with me about that whole experience if you don't mind. Yeah, the Shrine Bowl was a great experience for me. You know, I'm very blessed. I was very blessed to get that opportunity, you know, just to go out there against, you know, other top talent in this draft class and kind of uh, show what I can do. Uh, so, yeah, I felt like that was a good experience. You know, had some – strung some good practices together, uh, got to talk with a lot of NFL scouts, and, you know, got to know a lot of guys, you know, just from around the country. So uh, I just thought it was an overall good experience. You know, I wish we could have won the game. but. Uh, you know, it is what it is. So with all those guys that you were able to play against out there uh, at, at the East West Shrine Bowl, like who do you think was, uh, I don't know, toughest competition or something out there? <laughs> the toughest competition? Um, yeah, I would just, it, there was a lot of good DBs there. I'll probably say two that kind of stuck out were uh, Quinn Lake from UCLA um, and Dallas Flowers from Pitt State. Those those are two good DBs that, you know, I had some good competition with. Nice. Uh, I've actually sat down with, with Flowers, I believe, at one point or another. So, I mean, um, yeah. it's nice. We're actually, we're actually roommates at uh, the Shrine game as well. So That's sweet. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's nice to see uh, guys who, you know, were small school, you know, guys like yourself and him, you know, really getting the spotlight now. So, I mean, uh, yeah. it's, it's great that uh, – I mean, I've, I've kind of followed your career, you know, ever since you were there at Montana. So uh, what what sticks out to you as like, I don't know, maybe like the biggest highlight or moment of your career? Like, um, is there a game that, uh, you know, is this one of those things that just kind of replays in your head or something? Uh, 
yeah, there were a couple of games, you know, while I was at Montana that kind of stick out when I think of my time there. Uh, the first, I would say, is the Portland State game. Uh, that was just a special game for me because it was in my hometown. And, you know, I kind of had to, a, a chip on my shoulder that game, you know, just having – being in Portland State's backyard and they didn't really recruit me coming out of high school like that. So whenever I played Portland State, it kind of just mean a little something. So in, in 2019, I had a pretty good game against them. So that's something that kind of sticks out for me there. And then also uh, my game against Southeastern Louisiana – uh, while I was at Montana, because that was my first playoff game ever playing in. I had been waiting to play in a play, playoff game my whole Montana. Finally came in that 2019 year, uh, and we are at home too, so the atmosphere was crazy. And uh, I ended up having, you know, the best game of my career. So those those are definitely two games that, that stick out for me. Awesome. I mean, uh, again, uh, Montana's an excellent program, bud. I mean, it, I'm just uh, – you know, I, I think it's great that you were able to solidify yourself there. And then again, like I said, I mean, still just kind of, you know, kept on, you know, with your success, you know, as you progress to Nebraska. So um, it's, it's, it's been it's been an interesting journey just kind of watching you through the years. So um, do have a couple more questions for you. I mean, a, a guy who's uh, had a lot of different coaches along the way. So I wanted to ask this question is basically um, – what do you feel is the best lesson you've ever learned from a coach, whether it be your head, one of your head coaches, position coaches, or uh, any anyone there, like uh, over the past several years? Um, I would probably say, you know, while I was at Montana, just the lesson of of how important practice is. You know, that was kind of taught. I was kind of taught by the whole staff. You know, it's an old school staff, hard nosed, uh, where you know they're gonna they're gonna be tough on you, but they're gonna love you at the same time. But my receiver coach, Coach Pease, uh, at the University of Montana was, you know, always on me about how important practice is and about how uh, you can't take any reps off. And, you know, once you're in the game and it's in that high pressure situation or big atmosphere, you're always going to fall back to the level of your training. So uh, I think that's probably the most important uh, lesson that I've been taught. And I still, you know, kind of remind myself to this day, you know, when I – you know, sometimes you go out there and you don't feel like you want to practice, but just realizing how important it is is important. Sure. I mean, I, I completely get it there. Um, uh, another qu quick question. Um, if you could give your younger self advice, you know, go back in time, talk to your uh, younger self there in high school in, in Portland, Oregon, um, kind of give him some pointers or something to help him through this journey you've been on. Um, what would you tell him? I would say, you know, work harder at football earlier or take it more seriously earlier. Because, you know, when I was a freshman and, and sophomore in, in high school, I was kind of just playing the game because I loved it. I had been playing it my whole life, you know, and all my friends did it. So it was a good time to have fun with them. But I wasn't playing with the intention to play at the next level. So, you know, I wasn't doing camps or, or, or seven on seven, anything like that, at least early on in my career. So if I could go back, I would definitely tell myself to, you know, kind of start doing that extra training earlier, work on my craft earlier, you know, because so you can get noticed by, uh, you know, bigger schools early on. Sure. Well, I mean, again, you know, despite you not attending some of those camps, I mean, I, I feel like there are scouts out there that, that still see you as a draftable, you know, really good prospect, you know, going, you know, going into this this year's draft. So. Um, you have a guy who did very well in his pro day. So uh, let's chat about your pro day, if you don't mind. I mean, a guy, again, running in like the four fours, uh, which is really excellent. So um, uh, chat me, with me about that experience overall. Yeah, pro day was a really good experience. Um, you know, I feel like I performed pretty well, like you said, ran in the four fours and kind of hit, hit most of my numbers that I wanted across the board as far as the, the, the cone drills and the, the broad jump as well. So, you know, I, and, you know, just the opportunity to compete in front of so many different scouts, uh, being at uh, Nebraska one last time, it was pretty special. So is it that 40 that you're most proud of? Is that the one drill that uh, you, you, you know, really got yourself uh, prepared for or what? Yeah, probably just because that you, it, that's the drill that the NFL scouts look at the most. You know, the NFL, you know, has always put a, a big emphasis on the 40. So, 
obviously if, if it's important to them, it's important to me as well. So I had to, you know, make sure I ran a good time in that one. Yeah. And, and just kind of recap some of those numbers, the guy who is in uh, about six, seven, seven in the three cone, um, 34, five vert um, and 10, four broad jump. Those are some good numbers there Four two two shuttle. So um, you get a guy who uh, has the ability to um, really change directions very well. Um, and again, some good uh, downhill speed too. So uh, we obviously love those numbers. So um, let's get a chance. I do want to meet uh, Samara Torre outside of uh, this game of football. So uh, tell me something about yourself that maybe not everybody knows, something interesting, fun, unique, uh, hobbies, interests, or what have you. So uh, give me something. Yeah, so I, I mean, I'm a pretty low-key guy. So I'll probably say one thing that the public doesn't really know about me is you know, I, I really like to watch movies, you know, and TV shows and stuff like that. So I'm I'm a big movie head. And, uh, you know, other than that, I just like to play video games, you know, just hang out with uh, some of my close friends, you know, go out, do whatever stuff like bowling and stuff like that. But, you know, other than that, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a pretty just a low key guy, I would say. Gotcha. What TV shows you binge watching these days? Um. Well, right now I'm watching. Uh, the the new the Showtime Lakers show on HBO I think it's called Winning Time, uh that's that's been one of my favorite shows so far. You know I watched Snowfall on Hulu. I'll probably say one of my favorites you know of all time is probably Game of Thrones. Uh so there there's a lot of different shows that I watch you know so it's hard to keep track of them all. Yeah I think they're supposed to come out with another Game of Thrones thing here soon. I don't know yeah what, yeah I saw what, that. What that's gonna be all about but. Uh, uh, let me just uh, throw another a couple more at you, uh, like kind of one uh, answer thing. Um, uh, have you ever thought about like a favorite car? Like, you know, you're going to get this big, you know, paycheck from the NFL here here soon. So uh, have you ever thought about like that one dream car that you've always wanted? I mean, there, there's there's a few dream cars, you know, obviously, you know, I like Bugatti's. Uh, you know, Mercedes, like any Benz, BMW, just any luxury cars. Like I wouldn't say it's just one, but uh, I don't know if I'm gonna be able to drop that check so early on in my career. You know, I might go and go and lease lease something nice, but uh, can't can't be blowing through all my money right away. But you know, hopefully, hopefully, I'll get to that that real dream car at some point. Sure. Well, I mean, at least you're smart enough to be able to uh, manage your money uh, and, and not completely blow everything the first go go around. So uh, not, nice to have that plan. Like I really, I really like a like a Bugatti and uh, and all that, but I, I I don't know if I'm gonna be able to afford that just right away. So no, yeah, I, but maybe someday. I get it, man. Even, you know, so right now it's just gonna be some like a uh, little sedan or something for for a little bit while yeah. you get yourself. Uh, you know, acclimated to the NFL. So uh, we'll, right. we'll we'll see what, what happens there. So, um, uh, Samari, as we uh, wrap things up, uh, I want to give you one last opportunity to uh, really just kind of speak directly to all those scouts that might be watching. Um, we do know for a fact that there are scouts that watch these videos, and I want you to take the opportunity to just give them your pitch as to why they need to draft you uh, why they shouldn't wait until the seventh round to do so, uh, because you are a, an excellent, uh, you know, prospect. So uh, tell tell them your pitch and, uh, you know, what makes you a good addition to their uh, program. So go for it. Yeah, I mean, you know, when an NFL team uh, picks me up or drafts me, whatever they do, you know, they're going to get a player that, that works very hard in practice and is just essentially going to make make the team a better team, you know, hopefully just – not not just with, you know, how I play football, but how I carry myself, you know, in the locker room and, and off the field as well. So they're going to get someone that's going to work really hard, and they're also going to get a, a pretty good football player that can that can hopefully make explosive plays, you know, help out on special teams. You know, one of those guys that's willing to do anything and everything to, to help the team win. Uh, and, you know, I feel like I've been, I've been kind of a steal all my life. You know, when I went to the University of Montana, you know, didn't have a lot of offers that they were kind of saying I was a steal there, you know, so the same thing when I was going into Nebraska. So, you know, I don't see why it can't be different, you know, going into the NFL. Yeah. I mean, I definitely feel like you're going to be one of those steals. So uh, it'll be fun to hear your name called. Do you have any plans for a draft day? Where are you going to be? Who are you going to be with? 
Nah, I don't have any plans right now. You know, I'll probably just be, you know, at home, you know, probably at my grandma's house you know, with my mom and uh, my dad and stuff like that. But, you know, I don't have any big plans. I'm not going to Vegas or nothing like that. So I'm just going to be, you know, chilling and, and, and see what happens. All right. Well, uh, definitely, uh, you know, looking forward to hearing your name called on draft day. And uh, best of luck to you uh, moving forward. All right, bud? Yeah, I appreciate it. No problem. Once again, uh, Samari Torre wide receiver uh, out of Nebraska. So uh, definitely check him out.